This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. It's all for the best as we prepare you the way for a performance of Godspell in downtown Hazelton. We have a preview next. Welcome everyone. I hope you're all doing great after the latest snowstorm to hit our area. I'm Ken Kerr and we have the weather coming up. But first, this local information from SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. The Hazelton area is mourning the loss of a young woman who brought a smile to so many each and every day. 27-year-old Caitlin Tarud of Beaver Meadows died in a one-car crash yesterday morning. State police say that Tarud was traveling east on Spring Mountain Road in Banks Township and was negotiating a curve. The vehicle traveled off the right side of the road for unknown reasons, then back on the roadway, crossed over the lanes and went off the side of the road, striking a tree. A three-year-old passenger sustained minor injury. The young woman was a local dance teacher, a visiting nurse, and also worked at the Poppy Press Coffee Company in downtown Hazleton. State police are asking any witnesses to the crash to call Trooper Williams at the state police barracks in Hazleton. A man whose family name was synonymous with Hazleton Radio has died. Victor C. Deem of South Carolina, known as Bud to his friends and family, died at the age of 76. His father, Victor C. Deem Sr., was the founder and owner of what was WVCDFM and WAZL AM Radio in Hazleton. The son spent the first half of his life in broadcasting and then went on to a second career in real estate. A memorial service will be held Saturday at 2 p.m. at Christ Lutheran Church. In Cunningham. A month long narcotics trafficking investigation led to two arrests yesterday. The Hazleton Police Department Narcotics Division and members of the Luzerne County Drug Task Force executed a search warrant at 696 North Locust Street. The warrant came after five controlled buys of fentanyl. 21 year old Jose Baez Polanco is facing a list of drug charges. 25 year old Daryl Moore was also in the residence and found to have a warrant for failure to appear out of Monroe County. The hit Broadway musical Godspell is coming to Hazleton. As John Eric Poli tells us, the curtain goes up this Friday night at the Pennsylvania Theater of Performing Arts in downtown Hazleton. PTPA puts on great shows all year long, and this weekend you're going to have a chance to see another great show. Of course, they'll be putting on Godspell starting this weekend, also be going on the following weekend as well. Here to tell us all about the show is Samantha Sugart. She is the director and choreographer for Godspell. So, Samantha, why don't we start with Godspell? Why don't you kind of explain the storyline and what all it entails for people that aren't familiar with it? Sure. Godspell is pretty much like the story of Jesus's tellings, um, snippets from the Bible, all put to music. So it's storyline through with song and dance. So now what's really interesting about Godspell is you can kind of change the theme of it to whatever you, uh, you want it to be. So the show's always different. You guys chose a carnival theme. So kind of explain how that all, you know, happened. Sure. I've actually done the show twice before, so we've kind of put a different spin on it each time. It's still the same exact script. You're still, still like, telling the same story. Um, this time, yes, we're doing a circus carnival theme. Um, some of the characters just kind of lend themselves to carnival performers or circus acts and things like that. And so we thought it was a nice marriage of the two right together. So Sam, why don't you go ahead and give us the details on the show and tell everybody how they can get their tickets. Sure, uh, we open this Friday, so that's the 10th, and we run through Sunday, January 19th. Um, Friday and Saturday performances are at 7 p.m. and Sunday is at 3. And if you would like to make a reservation, you would call 454-5451, leave a message, and we will get back to you to confirm. And then we want to make sure that everyone knows, too, normally you guys do um, a buffet before the show. There's no buffet. You guys are doing some carnival food, correct? Yeah, we decided to kick off our 2020 season with something a little bit different. Um, the theater is actually going to be set up differently overall. So we're doing different seating. We will have some tables available for those who would like a uh, table. Um, make sure that you mention that when you make your reservation. But we're not doing our regular dinner buffet 90 minutes prior. Actually, at every performance, we're going to have like circus and carnival food available for purchase a la carte. So that'll be at all six performances. Popcorn going to be on that? Of course. All right. Well, who doesn't like popcorn? I mean, I'd rather eat a big bucket of popcorn than go and get any type of buffet style food. I mean, that's just, I don't know, maybe I'm weird, but hey, that's the way how I like my food. Anyway, 
Let's get back to the uh, show here for a second. Uh, we know that these kids work so hard all year long, uh, no matter what the performance is. Obviously, you guys have been grinding now for a little while to get this performance underway. Tell us about the kids and the hard work that they put in to put up the show on. The January show uh, is always a difficult one because it's a really short turnaround time. We come right off of Christmas and the holidays and we go right into the January show and we try to get it in so that the kids that are home from college get a chance to perform while they're home. So it's a definite, it's a very, very short rehearsal period, um, but they, they're really, you know, pulling their weight and they're in rehearsals every day and um, it's really going to come through and they're having a great time. All right. Awesome. Well, good luck with the show. Hope it goes really well. Make sure, everyone, that you check it out. And most importantly, enjoy the carnival food. That's awesome. That's probably going to be, I mean, the show's going to be awesome, too, of course. But, I mean, come on out. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the show. It's going to be a great time. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. While you're looking at this snow, I want you to think about this on Saturday. It's going to be in the 50s, but more bad winter news now. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, partly cloudy and very cold with a low of 12 degrees. The wind chill will feel like zero and wind gusts up to 28 miles per hour. On Thursday, we have mostly sunny skies with a high of 28, mostly cloudy at night, low of 23, up to 42 degrees on Friday. But the morning starts with a chance of freezing rain and sleep before 10 a.m. 30% chance of precipitation, then a chance of rain. Friday night, 50% chance of rain cloudy, cloudy with a low of 40 degrees Saturday a 90% chance of rain but we do hit the mid 50s for a high rain at night 90% chance lows in the mid 40s Sunday 30% chance of showers partly sunny high of 46 and then partly cloudy Sunday night with a low of 30 degrees a short SSP TV standard speaker scoreboard tonight thanks to the latest winter storm. The Monoy area boys, they lost to Mount Carmel in a non-league game and MMI lost to Tunkhannock in girls basketball. Kim Mentler poured in 23 points for the Lady Preppers. In a Schuylkill League Division 3 game, Shenandoah Valley topped Weatherly in boys basketball. Owen Kozar led the Blue Devils with 24 points and Joe Carvoice had 18. Coming up next, some New Year's fitness advice from experts at the Lehigh Valley Health Network. And in sports, Ron Marchetti talks about the Cleveland Browns NFL title back in the day and the current NFL playoffs. We'll be right back. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's Talk of the Town. There will be a halookie and chicken dinner to benefit a local fire victim. This event will be on Saturday, January 25th from 4 until 6 p.m. at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Beaver Meadows. The deadline to order tickets is January 13th. And that's today's Talk of the Town. SPTV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Victor Christian Bud Diem Jr. of Indian Land, South Carolina. A memorial service will be held on Saturday at 2 p.m. at Christ Lutheran Church in Cunningham. Resume call Saturday from 12.30 until 2 p.m. at the church. Stephen J. Goodish of Nuremberg. A funeral service will be held on Saturday at 12 noon at the Harmon Funeral Home in Rock Glen. Friends may call Saturday from 10 a.m. until 12 noon at the funeral home. Jennifer L. Malisco, Packer Township, Weatherly. Services will be private under the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Thomas N. Prokipchak of Hazleton. Hazel Chapel of the Crofton News Funeral Home will announce their arrangements. And Michael N. Chappie Reno of Weatherly. Mass be Friday at 11 a.m. at Our Lady of Lords Roman Catholic Church in Weatherly. Friends may call Friday from 9.30 to 11 a.m. at the church. The Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Today's social and obituary report is brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. Call 570-788-0977 or go to harmonfuneral.com.